This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 115 of the Stable Scoop Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network. Equine Affair and the Psychology of Riding. Please support our sponsors as they make this show possible. Our title sponsor is Omega Alpha. You can find them at omegaalpha.ca. This episode is also sponsored by Equestrian Collections at equestriancollections.com. Plus, Uncle Jimmy's. You can find them at uncle-jimmy's.com. This is Glenn the Geek. And this is Helena B. And you're listening to the Stable Scoop Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network. Well, howdy, Helena. It is coming up to equine affair time. I, you know, I was excited to do this episode before we did this episode. And now I'm even more excited because I just love equine affair. In a love, few love, love short it. weeks, you're going to be taking the two-hour journey to western Massachusetts for one of the biggest horse expos in the country. Now, and I think I'm going to go by myself. Oh, that's, that's probably better, because then you don't have to worry about anybody else, and you can do whatever right. the heck you want. And I can spend hours and hours and hours there. Shopping <laughs> this, and watching there clinics. Isn't, yeah, not a square inch of this place that I don't want to cover. <laughs> Are you going and for two gonna, days, I hope? Uh, you know, I just might. <laughs> I just might it. get myself a hotel room and stay over. You're going to need it. Well, well I, we... We have a little preview of what uh, what Equine Affair is going to bring to the general public today, don't we? Yes, we do. And, and this show is going to be all about Equine Affair. We have uh, we have Karen back with us, who was with us last year. She is the uh, marketing director for, for Equine Affair, and she's going to tell us a little bit about what's going on and what's different this year. Plus, we have, I think, a new friend of yours. Oh, totally. I'm, I am all over this guy's stuff. I, yeah. Daniel yeah. Stewart. Yeah, Daniel Stewart is a. He's worked with the uh, U.S. team and the Canadian teams for many, many years. He, he's been a successful competitor and a trainer, and he he also has a, d- a degree in exercise science and psychology, and he really works on the sports psychology and equestrian biomechanics side of things. He's written books, he has workshops, all that stuff, and he's going to be at Equine Affair as a presenter. But he does something a little different. I think he's going to tell us about later. Uh, he, I've had the opportunity to talk to him a couple of times, and he's just a neat guy. I know you have never talked to him. I think you're going to like him a lot. I, I, I'm sure I will. I'm sure he look in, in going through his website and uh, reviewing. I haven't actually read his book, but it, it looks really good. I can't wait to get my uh, my mind around what Daniel Stewart has to offer. And he's a man after our own hearts. He has a sense of humor. Um, yes, he's you know, silly. You know, some of these clinicians <laughs> right? are, are dead bone serious, and it's kind of tough to get them to even smile. Uh, no, that's bleh. not true with Daniel. So I think I think you'll want to watch his clinics when you go, too, because he does some things that are a little bit differently, and, and I think you'll just find him a lot of fun. Um, and we're not going to spend a whole lot of time talking today because we really want to spend as much time as we can with Daniel. But I did want to tell you and follow up with everybody about my visit to Ohio and Kathleen on her journey across the country. Uh, we went up on Thursday, stayed with our good friend there, Jackie Baker, who has co-hosted this show before from uh, Regarding Horses blog. And her and her husband, Ben, uh, we spent a couple days with them, had an absolute wonderful time with them. Regardless of Kathleen riding through, we just had a great time with Jackie. Thank you, Jackie, for putting us up. And we, we, we would love to come back again. Jackie got to take a lesson with my wife, Jennifer, and we got to see her beautiful horse. So it was fun that way. And then on, I think it was Saturday night, uh, Kathleen came riding into town. And literally, we found her along the road. Oh, I can't believe that. Riding through I yards. <laughs> I, I saw your pictures on yeah. Facebook. I, it was so, like, when I saw that picture of her on, on, with her pack horse and her mare, I'm like, wow, she really just rode across the United States. Exactly. It was kind of weird for us as we saw her coming over the hill. It was like, yep, there she comes. And she rides through the yards and tries to stay off of the road as much as possible. There was these people working on their beautiful yard, right, where, where she rode through. And I was thinking, oh, I wonder if anybody ever yelled at her. And uh, But they were like, hi, what you doing? You know, and she's like, riding across the country. And then you see their faces, you know. 
Yeah, um, yeah. So she stayed with a good friend of Jackie's and we a lovely couple that we got to meet. And we, uh, we all went out to dinner that night, and uh, it w- we had a great time. She's in good spirits. We took her shopping for some Armor All underwear, uh, <laughs> some long smart. underwear, because it's getting chilly now. <laughs> and she's riding through northern Pennsylvania. She's going to follow along Route 80 and then into New Jersey, into your old stomping ground there, and then mm-hmm. hopefully ending up at the ocean here uh, in the next, well, she thinks the next three weeks. So... So that was neat to meet her. It was uh, good to spend a little time. There's some pictures up on Facebook. Go to stablescoop.com. And, or also you can go to, uh, where did I post those, Helena? Help me out here. I have no, oh, I Kathleen's have no idea. Wild Ride at her website. You want me to help you out? Uh, at, her, at her Facebook page, you just search for Kathleen's Wild Ride, and you'll find the pictures up there of us together. And uh, we fed her some uh, good food at a at a good Italian place that night, and she was uh, r- rare. Really, and ready no, to go uh, the next no bacon day. double cheeseburgers. No, we. She, I asked her. I said well, she had a bacon double cheeseburger for lunch. By the way, she said that bacon double cheeseburger in Canton at this little diner that apparently just opened was the best of the trip. So she had a new best, um, and she said she wanted Italian. So we went out Italian that night. Uh, it was fun. We had a good time. And uh, th- one of the funny things that happened was uh, we were getting the horses settled in in their pasture, and and they uh, and she got out this little four pack of and you've seen them of uh, chocolate chip cookies, mm-hmm. little four I'm pack listening. of you know you open them up and you eat your chips ahoy chocolate chip cookies. Well, they were for the horses. Those horses loved. They went running across the pasture. For chocolate chip cookies, and they devoured them. <sighs> I could not believe she said they've learned to eat a lot of people food along the way. <laughs> so it's like, but they, chocolate chip. they love chocolate well, you chip know. cookies. I, I love it's... chocolate chip cookies, so I don't know why a horse wouldn't like chocolate chip cookies. It's basically just grain and, and chocolate heaven. So, um, so that was one of the cute things that happened. And we actually have a picture of her feeding the chocolate chip cookies to the horses because we thought that was so cool. <laughs> Uh, so that was that was our visit. It was fun. Again, thanks to Jackie and, and everybody for all their help in putting that together. She is now in Pennsylvania on her way across northern Pennsylvania at this point. She's going to be going through Puxatawney on Friday. I love that uh, word, that yeah, name. Yeah, so uh, she hopefully won't see the groundhog. And no. She'll be <laughs> passing be right through. So, so, uh, so that's kind of neat. We actually sent her a little care package up to Puxatawney that we hope she gets. So that mm. so we're looking forward to uh, hearing about the end of her trip in the next couple of weeks. She is she to... looking forward to the end of her trip, or is she yeah, still good? Yeah, she's kind of looking forward to it now. And she did start writing her book. She has the first chapter and a half done. Uh, oh, good. So okay. she's working on that, and you know, really talking about her 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 trip and her mission and what she wanted to do for herself and and the people, the in- very interesting people. She she was telling us stories the whole night. Of uh, some of the interesting people that she met, and she she does have some stories to tell. So wow! So, so Kathleen, could, uh... keep your head up, uh, keep the horses healthy, and and uh, we'll we'll hopefully talk to you next week. Let's take a break here before we get to Karen Brennan uh, from Equine Affair and hear from Kyle Carter talking about our friends at Omega Alpha. Well, Helena, Omega Alpha Pharmaceuticals creates only natural health products. Their scientists, guided by Dr. Gordon Chang, formulate a wide variety of mainly herbal health products to address many equine health problems. And I have on the line here Kyle Carter, who is an international eventer and well-known throughout the eventing world, who uses Omega Alpha products. Kyle, I understand that you started using uh, Omega Alpha about a year ago. Yeah, I've, I've been using it for about a year and have noticed a remarkable difference in the horses that have been on it. And then um, if, they've, if they've come off of it, the horse's health always has been better on it. Um, it's one of the few supplement companies that I wholeheartedly believe in. Well, thank you, Kyle. You know, Omega Alpha brings consumers the perfect marriage of nature and science. Look for all of their products at retailers nationwide or visit their website at omegaalpha.ca. That's omegaalpha.ca. 
All right. Well, you have been to Equine Affair in Massachusetts probably every time, right? I mean, just every time, you know, just yeah, about. So. Yep. So let's talk about this year's, which is coming up in a couple of weeks. We like to talk about it every year because it's so much fun. And we are going to have Karen Brennan on with us. She's the marketing director for Equine Affair. Well, hi, Karen, and welcome back to the Stable Scoop Show. It's always good to talk to you about your big event in Massachusetts. Yes, well, thank you for having me on. 230 clinicians, seminars, and demonstrations, 400 of the nation's leading equine retailers, and 40 breeds of horses from around the world. And um, so what do you do in your spare time? (laughs) (laughs) That's a very good question. We've been producing uh, the Massachusetts, the California, and the Ohio events, and that really takes our time year-round. I bet. (laughs) Just mm-hmm. how many did would you say? We say 230 clinics, seminars, Clinician? and demonstrations. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it's certainly a power pack lineup. Um, we have a schedule that runs continuously all four days, and we have back to back sessions. So there's very little downtime at our events. Give everybody the dates again and where it's at. Yes, it's November 11th through the 14th at the Eastern States Exposition in West Springfield, Massachusetts. And this will be our 13th annual event at this location. And the neat thing about this year is that Thursday will also be Veterans Day. So uh, we hope everyone can come out and join us. Well, I'm sure, Helena, have you been to all 13? Pretty close. (laughs) Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. I think I missed like one year when I was pregnant, (laughs) like very pregnant. Um, Now, one of the things that I love about this venue is that you you really attract a high level of... um, presenters. And I'm wondering, because Equine Affair is such a fabulous uh, event, do they come to you or do you seek them out? And, and how, does, how do you decide who's going to present on a given year? Well, we have a program director who evaluates uh, the various clinicians that have either approached us or we approach them. It actually works both ways. Um, and we try to go with A, headliners that people have heard of, but also, B, to go with the up-and-comers. Um, we try to cover both the general horsemanship and then also try to pick the best from each discipline that is available to us. So we try to cover the gamut and make sure that we uh, address everyone's likes uh, through the various clinician lineups that we have. Yeah, and you've got a few this year. you got Chris Cox, Monty Roberts, Julie Goodnight, Stacey Westfall. Mm-hmm. By the way, you know, most of these people have been on the shows and are good friends of the Horse Radio Network. Jane Savoy, Denny Emerson, just the list goes on. Aaron Ralston, who helped us mm-hmm. out with our coverage of the World Equestrian Games. And, oh, by the way, you also helped exactly. NBC. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and, oh, by the way. <laughs> by the way, yeah, he just helped that little TV network, too. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, Daniel Stewart's coming up on the show later on. He's one that maybe uh, a lot of people have not heard of so much like the others, but he is one of the most fascinating. And people are going to see later on in the show here, you know, the the cool cool guy he is and what you can learn from him. And he's, a, he's into equine sports psychology. But you have a program I want to talk about that makes this a little bit different. And you did it, was it last year or the first year of it? Uh, No, we've had this for a couple of years now. So tell us about it. It's called the Versatile, uh, I'm going to get the name right here. You won't. You'll mess it up. Yeah, the Versatile Horse and Rider Competition. (laughs) What is it and and what happens during it? Well, this is a timed and judged race. It's through an obstacle course that's created to test communication between horse and rider as well as each competitor's horsemanship skills. It's suitable for all riders and for any discipline and any type of horse breed. Um, as the horse and rider work through the obstacle course, they're, they're judged on several criteria as well as overall performance. So the neat thing this year is that we have uh, Aaron Ralston as the judge, and then we also have Julie Goodnight as our guest commentator. And oh, she'll be good at that. Compete, yeah. Yes, she's great at that. Uh, contestants compete for 5500 in cash and other prizes. So wow. it's going to be a power-packed event, and it's always fun for people to come out and cheer on their favorite team. And and last year's winner, who was who won last year? Last year was Sally Addington from Polk, Pennsylvania. Uh, she and her horse, Ghost of a Chance, have actually frequented our little circuit that we have uh, with the Versatile Horse and Rider and Craig Cameron's Extreme Cowboy Race, and they've done very well at our events. Well, they, oh, uh, that Extreme yeah, Cowboy yeah. Race. That's another one. That kind That's of explains good. why she does well, I think. Um, yes, yes. So this year, and how many competitors will there be? There will be 30 horse and rider teams. 
Um, the qualifying runs are on Friday and Saturday with the finals on Sunday morning. Oh, cool. And that must be a, a fan favorite, I would think. It really is. Um, usually the Coliseum is pretty full, and everyone likes to yell and scream and cheer on their favorite team. <laughs> <laughs> what day is that usually held? Um, this will take place on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and that will be in the Coliseum each day. Okay, good. And so if you happen to miss a, a portion of it, you've got two other days that you can catch it. Exactly, yes. And, of course, you have something that if, if, if somebody has not seen this, they must see it. I don't care if you have to borrow money. You go see <laughs> the Pfizer Fantasia because it's one of the coolest uh, equine entertainment shows out there. Yes, and this year will be great because we have JC, Jerry and Stacy Diaz back with us, and um, they'll be doing a Zorro act and a Roman riding act. Um, Aaron Ralston will be performing, and everyone's favorite, the Icelandics, will be back joining us again as well. So uh, they're always a crowd favorite. And and Aaron, by the way, uh, Helena, is one of the nicest guys you're ever going to meet. He used to be a rainer, and he still is. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, he does a lot of announcing now and, and helps out that way. But he is just one of the nicest guys. He he did a couple of the shows with us and was more than generous with his time. He has a lovely wife who also competes in raining. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm glad that he's involved in this. That'll be terrific. Bring yeah, a little of Texas to Massachusetts. We can That's use exactly it. exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> and you have some cool things in, in the uh, Pfizer Fantasia as well. Um, and you, you, you have a lot of different breeds. You'll see Andalusians and what, Pasifinos and Icelandics and Arabians and um, quarter horses and warm bloods. It just goes on and on. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's really a showcase of the diversity of the horse and what all the different breeds are capable of doing. It's, it's really a showcase to show off the breeds. Have you ever been to that, Helena? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool, mm-hmm. and it's not I that expensive I mean, either. It, you know, the the um, my only uh, complaint with, with equine affairs is I never have enough time to spend at every <laughs> single um, exhibit there. There's so much to learn, and e- there's so few places. I mean, it's, especially in these breed exhibits, where you get to um, where the horses and and the knowledge of the people behind these horses are so accessible. You know, you can have these little conversations with people and really learn and and get in touch and sort of network. There's no other place where you can do that the way you can at Equine Affair. Mm-hmm. Well, and let's not forget the shopping. Oh. <laughs> Who can forget the shopping? Oh, I, you know what my favorite part is? I love to run through all the trailers. <laughs> That's the best. When I walk into the big trailer section, it's like, oh, I think the heavens open up, you know. (laughs) My mouth goes slack. I I stop talking and I just start walking up ramps. (laughs) Well, you know, unfortunately for me, I spent years going to Equine Affair with Bitter Britain. And Mm -hmm. Bitter Britain, we were always so busy. I never got out of the booth. Yeah. So So I've never seen, really seen Equine Affair in Massachusetts because we never got out of the booth. It's really good. Yeah. It, was just, it is a shopping extravaganza. I don't care whether you're English or Western or just plain horse nuts. It, and it's Rods a, has a huge display there. They, yes. Bit of Britain has a big booth. Where driving Essentials is always has a good presence mm-hmm. there. Um, I always had to put my, my tushy in a Steuben saddle because they're there, and they've got the latest <laughs> well, and greatest. And, it, and that's the other thing. It's a great place to try new things on the market. Well, and the other cool thing is it's it's one of the very few expos that's held right before Christmas, so for holiday shopping right. it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Are we doing the, could we we are, we could take your job, I think. We're pretty <laughs> we're pretty good at marketing equine affair, I think. We're doing Well, Karen, do you I ever think you are. You've done a great job. <laughs> you talk about, you know, not working these these events and not being able to get out and enjoy them. Do you ever have the chance to to enjoy the event? Oh, certainly. Certainly. Um, you know, one of the things that we we really look forward to coming to the events. You know, we, we do the work at the office, and then we come out and we get to enjoy all the people and, and to make sure that everyone's enjoying themselves. And I think we all um, really are just thrilled to be able to see the product that we've put on and, and see how thrilled people are to enjoy it. Um, we all are horse people, and we greatly value 
uh, the horse industry. So it's always a thrill to be able to see everyone enjoy what we've worked on. Well, Helena, let's work with Karen for next year, and let's go. Let's actually go do the show from there. Let's. Uh, uh, we re- would love to have you. Yeah, let's, re- let's record it in front of an audience over at the uh, Equine Affair. That would be so much fun. And as I said, all these presenters are good friends of ours, so that would be fun to have them all on in the show. And I think we'd have That'd a great be awesome. time. Yeah. That as long as you great. let me out of the booth and, and don't feed me buckets <laughs> of chocolate for, you know, maybe I just need like, like, you know, a bathroom break and, and a real food break and maybe a shopping break. And maybe yeah, we work her to thing. death at these shows. <laughs> I think that's a fabulous idea. Yeah. Well, Karen, thank you very much. We look for uh, Helena looks forward. I live in Kentucky, so it's kind of tough. But H- Helena looks forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Well, you can go to the Ohio event. Yeah, we go to the Ohio event. It's uh, much, much closer for us, and it's over there in Columbus. Yeah. It's, it's actually a nice event as well. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we ought to go to the California yeah. events where we ought to go, Helena. It's we a ought, great we, we have a long to be out in California. Yeah, we, that's the one we should be going to. The heck with Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Karen. We appreciate it. Well, if you guys didn't get the idea, I'm super wicked excited, as they say up here in Massachusetts. I'm wicked excited for Equine Affair. <laughs> and uh, I, there's just so many, gosh, I'm going to have to book a couple of hotel rooms and stay over this time. Um, you know, and talking about being excited, uh, it's holiday time coming up real soon. And I can't think of a better gift for the horse or pony owner in your life than Uncle Jimmy's horse treats. Nothing says love and caring more than a couple of Uncle Jimmy's hanging balls. <laughs> and for outside the stall, what better than Uncle Jimmy's squeezy buns? Those are individually wrapped, nutritious, squeezy treats for your horse. And if that's not enough to satisfy, try Uncle Jimmy's licky things. You can find all of these cool treats and a lot more at uncle-jimmys.com. You're laughing. I know you're giggling. You just like to hear me say Uncle Jimmy's hanging balls. Well, the way this was written, I wrote it just for you. You know that, don't you? Yes, I do. <laughs> I done good, though. You huh? did. You got through it without just dying of laughter, because I thought you'd really get this, the line that says, nothing says love and caring more than a couple of Uncle Jimmy's hanging balls. I well, really you thought you were going to lose it at that point. You practiced <laughs> this, didn't you? You saw it ahead of I time. I, but I have to say that I, I, have, I had, I just went through a huge bucket of Uncle Jimmy's squeezy buns, and I love them. My horses love them. They're awesome for training because they're squishy, and you can break them up. I probably have said this in the last nine episodes, but you can break them up and, <laughs> into little bits and use them for training. And, of course, my horse needs a lot of training. So it was easy for me to have the passion because it was sincere. <laughs> and I knew I Uncle Jimmy's would appreciate a little holiday humor with his, uh, with his hanging balls. But, by the way, Uncle Jimmy, I'm out of squeezy buns. Well, you know what? I think he goes to Equine Affair. Um, he oh, has right. in the past. I don't know if he's going this year, but he has in the past. So you might see him there. All right. Well, then I'll have to pick up another bucket. Yeah, hit, a, hit him up for another bucket and a couple hanging balls, too. I got to get myself a Redmond Rock also. Yeah, well, and I don't know. <laughs> so if much to get. <laughs> much to get. All right. This is a, uh, a somebody coming up who we we know uh, from the Horse Radio Network and we respect. He's always a lot of fun and very insightful and very informative. I think you're going to love this guy. You're going to want to have him back, Helena. And his mm-hmm. name is Daniel Stewart, and we'll talk more about him with him right now. Well, hi, Daniel, and welcome to the Stable Scoop Radio Show. We appreciate you being on. Good afternoon. I couldn't be happier. It's nice, well, to, it's nice to speak with you again. Well, you know, I, I missed you at the World Equestrian Games. I know that you stopped by to see us a couple of times down at the IEF, and we were out at the park, and it, we were very busy for 16 days, and I apologize for that. I, I did my best to come by and see you, but I'll be honest as well. That, that, that was such an amazing show. The leg this year was, was so well done that I had a hard time pulling myself away. I, I kept telling myself I should get down there and stand in my booth, but, but it never really did happen. Uh, it was a great show. It was hard, hard, hard for all of us to pull ourselves away. Well, and, you know, we have you on because you're going to, going to be a clinician at the upcoming uh, Equine Affair in Massachusetts, which we talk about every year, mainly because Helena goes to it. Um, she's, <laughs> that's she's, why I have my own show. I can right. talk about all this stuff that's I her, like. That's her, that's her one road trip of the year. That's it. She it's does it. her Thelma and Louise thing. She hits, the, <laughs> she hits the road in a minivan and goes to Equine Affair. <laughs> oh, well, wait a minute. See, he's got it all wrong because he wasn't around when I put the whole family and the St. Bernard in the car and drove 18 hours to South Carolina to go look at a horse. So, 
It's true. I mean, I think I had it all right. I can see <laughs> in that minivan right now, heading up to Massachusetts. <laughs> well, um, Daniel, now you're a you've been a successful competitor and a trainer for many, many years, and I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on the past. I'd rather really talk about. Uh, the future, but you also have a degree in uh, exercise science and psychology, and we really, we really, we have you on the on the horses in the morning show coming up too with a regular segment, and I think we have some kind of funny name for it. Um, but you know, you you really have been helping teams and coaching and helping people with the the sports psychology end of things, right? Yeah, I think that that's become a pretty big focus. You know, in in Regardless of what sport the, you know, a, a, an athlete participates in, whether it's whether it's swimming or tennis or or or, or horseback riding, uh, I think I think that we all need to believe that the that the mind is just as important as the body. You know, and I, I think what we what we've really started to awaken to is is that um, that pressure has uh, such a tight relationship with. Uh, um, performance and potential and possibility. You know, meaning that when pressure goes up, our our potential tends to go down. When pressure goes up, our uh, position tends to go down. When pressure goes up, uh, possibility and potential all seem to go down. So, so you're right. I think what happened is I, uh, for years, I was a, a, a trainer and, 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 and a rider and a competitor. But it, it, I think the greatest challenge I had with my students was always, you know, making sure that. Saturday at the show, they rode just as well as they did Wednesday after school. Um, and I think it saddened me for many years to see my great riders, you know, wonderful riders, I'd get to the show and get nervous or focus on, oh, gee, their parents or their boyfriend is watching, or, oh, this girl beat me last time. And, and I think I was saddened, you know, to see my great, wonderful, cool riders, you know, sort of wither under the pressure and not ride so great. So, yeah, a couple of years ago, I I, uh, I went to school and uh, and I studied sports science, including sports psychology, and I put that together with the background of riding, and, and what came out of it was a pretty, you know, a, a, a pretty cool look at, at riding, and, and it's, it's interesting, you know, instead of just talking about shoulders and hips and heels, you know, we now talk about, uh, you know, uh, um, self-confidence, self-belief, and focus, um, because it's, it's pretty clear that when we lose our self-confidence, self-belief, and focus, it um, doesn't matter how great our legs and hips and heels are, uh, uh, our emotions are, are going to limit all those great things that we develop. So, you, you know, yeah, Helene, you're right, I did. I, I, I talk a lot. I, you just interrupt me. Anytime. Okay, I will. Um, I don't have a problem with that either, Dan. Uh, no. no <laughs> really, neither does my wife. Like, I, have to, like, I have to fight really. to get a word in edgewise in these shows. I'm the co-host, but my gosh, my <laughs> airtime is like next to nothing here. Hey, Helena, I wanted to tell you, this relates to what you're just talking about actually relates to our past weekend that we talked about earlier, Helena. We went over... And we saw a good friend of ours, and I'm not speaking out of school here because she wrote a blog post about it, but uh, it was Jackie Baker from Regarding Horses blog. We were over there over the weekend, and my wife gave her her first lesson that she's had, God bless her, in about 10 years. And she she was really nervous, actually, when we watched her ride. And she wrote that blog post about how nervous she got, how she's not nervous when she's she doesn't have people watching and how she gets nervous when she does. You know, that, that's not even competing, Daniel. This goes back to anybody who rides. There's so many people like Jackie that when they ride by themselves, they're fine. But if they even think there's somebody watching them, they, they fall apart. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I'm, you know, <clears throat> I'm not saying that they fall apart, but, but their, their, their potential certainly does go down when yes. you think about it. And, and you know what's interesting is... is you know, we all started to ride for the same reason. We all started riding for the pure love of the horse, for the smell of the horse. We loved, at that point, we loved getting squished in the corner and stepped on. We thought that was really cool. Um, uh, <laughs> you know, do. we loved getting up in the morning. We still, we loved muck and stalls. We loved getting dirty. And we still do. But see, I think that's the neat point is that when we start to ride and get nervous that other people are watching us, we've forgotten why we started to do this in the first place. You know, and our sport is so amazing it's so unique you never see you know you never see a tennis player hugging his racket you know but what makes our sport you know equally as unique you never see a skier yelling at his ski because it spooked its snow you know I mean, there's just so many great parts of our sport and those of those riders that that start to get nervous or tense or or focus on what other people think um we just need to remind them, you know, hey, let's back up a step. Let's remember why we do this. Let's remember the love and the passion involved. 
And remember also that if you can re- if you can regain that love and passion, that your success will go up. You know, uh, whatever's going on between our ears has such an effect uh, of what happens below our ears. So if what's going on between our ears is negative and 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 disappointing, frustrating, then we ride in a negative sort of frustrated way. So now, as I'm uh, I'm listening to you, mm-hmm. Daniel, I'm I'm this image of a triangle is appearing in my mind, and I'm seeing the three key parts of the ride are their their mind their body and their heart or their, their passion. And it sounds to me like your approach to, to teaching and to coaching is to somehow string those three points of this triangle together. Um, and so you tell us a little bit about ride right now and how that scenario of those three parts of the rider come together with your philosophy and your approach to teaching those clinics. That's, I mean, that's a really neat way of, of looking at it, you know, and, and it's kind of like what comes first, the chicken or the egg. Um, uh, the athletic part of riding is very important, but what holds the athletic rider back are, you know, negative emotions, the, the mental part. But then what holds riders back from the mental part is the, 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 for, the, the, the loss of passion. So the, the three triangles, you know, the spirit, the body, the mind, those sort of things, they really do go hand in hand. And, and I love this story. And this story just does such a really cool job of, of helping us understand this, is that a couple of years ago, one of the, one of the uh, U.S. cross-country riders, she was on course, she's doing amazing, everything is awesome, and then out of nowhere, she gets hit in the, in the, in the chest by this big, massive duck right like there's huge mallard in the chest right <laughs> duck hits the ground is flopping around feathers everywhere the rider one of the world's greatest riders then forgot the rest of her course she couldn't finish it had nothing to do you know when you think about it that that rider had been you know waiting her whole life to get on that course that day she was you know she was representing this was going to be amazing she was not able to succeed that day. It didn't have anything to do with her spirit or her passion. She loves it. She remembers it. It didn't have anything to do with her, with the athletics of it. She had great posture, great breathing, great seats, you know, wonderful leg. What took her potential away to succeed was strictly the mind, you know. So, well, she got hit so by a duck. Then, <laughs> then she got hit by, like, this massive duck. Like, she said, it was like, it was like if you did it in slow motion, you'd see it on one of those home video shows. It was like, <laughs> then boom, duck feathers everywhere. And you got to give it to her, right? That was, like, weird. But the duck to her caused her a second of, of, of she lost her concentration, a little bit of doubt, completely lost her focus, and that took the color of the ribbon or the color of the metal, not that we should focus on that, but that did take her success away. I, th- I think the duck just away. made me lose my focus just p- visualizing that. Okay, but how cool it would it be is if she could, okay. If she had won she the, the duck, um, <laughs> No, okay, that would have been, that would have been the wrong, st- well, no, the, the, the great story would have been she hits a duck, but she's been working so hard on her mental game that it didn't bother her. She well, that's what I mean, and yeah. she succeeded. Yeah, that would have been, that would have been great, you know, and, and it's funny because I hear these stories over and over again. I, I watched the young writer uh, going cross country once. She was amazing. Everything is great. And then on the very last fence, she got a really long spot, got left behind. I almost came off. No worries, but not the prettiest finish we'd ever seen. She comes back in, and I'm like, so, hey, great course. We're going to work on that last fence next time. She goes, there's a bunny. And I'm like, what? She's like, there's a bunny. And I'm like, what? what? And she goes, in the ditch of the last fence, there was a bunny. As I approached, he popped his head up. He looked around, and he ran away. She goes, I didn't want to run over the bunny. Aww. You know what? In riding, in riding, ducks and bunnies have become our metaphor for whatever it takes your greatness away. So, for example, um, if I repeat these words, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. That's a duck. That's a, the duck is the metaphor of what takes your greatness away. Negative thinking can take my potential to succeed away. Something like saying to myself, oh, my gosh, everybody's watching and gets so nervous when they watch. That's another duck. You know, there's just all of these ducks flying around as riders. If we can learn how to dodge the ducks, you know, if we can learn, or if we hit a duck, and are able to still keep ourselves in the zone and stay focused. That's when we can really allow our body, you know, this great body, the great posture, seat, leg that we've developed. That's when we can let all of our greatness actually produce success. If I hit a duck, duck and... while I'm on a cross-country course, I'm trying out for the Olympics. If I hit a duck and I can keep going, I am going to the Olympics. I love it. Consider it's... If you can do that, 
you can you can get through anything. And I, you know, I always tell riders when, you know, whenever you lose your focus, I, I like this little trick. Um, I sing a song, you know. So, so I, this is one of the greatest songs in the world for riders. Um, ain't nothing gonna break my stride. Nothing's gonna slow me down. No, no, I gotta keep on moving. I think that's great, you know. So, like, let's say this rider's on course. She gets hit in the duck by the chair. She gets hit in the duck. She gets hit in the chest by a duck. Um, then she goes, oh my gosh, what was that? What was that? She gets flustered she loses her focus she forgets her course or if she did this she's riding she gets hit in the chest by the duck then she shakes it off she goes ain't nothing gonna break my stride nothing's gonna slow me down and then she finishes and succeeds what happens there the difference is this there are a lot of good physical riders in the world and there are a lot of good mental riders in the world when you bring a good physical and a good mental rider together that's when we really identify greatness. That's the sort of definition of, of, of greatness when it comes to athletics. If that rider on course can get hit in the chest by the duck but still maintain focus by singing her song or whatever it is, if she can still maintain focus, she's got the good mental, she's got the good physical, and as a result, we create greatness. I got, I, 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 I have just, two, I'm pretty passionate yeah, about Yeah, I have that. two examples of that, actually. Last year at uh, Rolex, when uh, Buck Davidson's horse got bit by a dog on the cross-country course. Um, Did you see that thing chasing him around? Yes, I mean, yeah. you know, and then another yeah. example is just from the WAG was what we talked about last week, Helena, was Jessica Phoenix doing her face plant into the water there at the, uh, at the, on the cross-country course at the head of the lake. That girl could have mm-hmm. been hit by a hippopotamus and kept going. I know. She was just, <laughs> it was just amazing. I mean, that that truly was amazing, and it's just what you're talking about. Hey, well, Helena, have you, have... Ever had, have you ever had that, that fear um, of competing? You know, have, have you ever had that real bad, or, you know, what's, what's your story? Oh, well, you're, you're, you're yes. talking about me personally? No, yeah. I'm talking to Helena. You know, Helena, you know actually. I was actually, refer- oh, yeah, I was asking Helena that. Well, I have a lot of confidence issues. It, it's I, I can do it, but I don't think I can do it. I, I'm very much a mental rider. I, I, my body would love for my mind to just shut down and take a vacation, and so would my horse. Um, <laughs> I was going to say your horse would probably get a kick out of it too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's um, it, it, what I find is I just sometimes I don't have the right tool in my toolkit, like that little song you mentioned, to get me through that. It's um, when you are sort of in my opinion, when you're a goal-oriented rider and you're working toward a goal, no matter how small it is, even if it's just, you know, a couple of strides at the canner or something, um, and you get stuck, I need a tool in my toolkit that I can pull out and help me regain the focus. Um, Because if if I get stuck and stay stuck, my confidence goes way down. So Yeah, and then it feeds on itself, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then the next time you get on and then, well, what if, what if I can't do this and what if I can't do that? And, and so, you know, how do, how does your everyday rider get these tools? How do you, how do you, you know, what do you? The tools are out there, you know, and, and so many of us are familiar with some of the tools, you know, you open up a a book on riding and, and there's a bunch of tools out there. I think, I think what we need to remember is, in my opinion, some of the most powerful tools are like the easiest ones of all. You know, for for example, you know, singing the song. So, you, you know, I always encourage riders, you know, my wife and I, we have a song. We love each other. We want to share something intimate together. This is ours. It's our song, all right? We love our horses just as much as 90% of the women riding. They love the horse just slightly more than the husband. Why can't we have a song? You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I've always encouraged riders, grab a song. You know, what is your song? Is it, I will survive, I will survive, or staying alive, staying alive? One rider, she says, well, I don't even compete, so I shouldn't really get a song. But you know what her song was when she just goes for a trail ride? Her song is, I'm sitting on the top of my bay. I thought that was neat. She just changed <laughs> the words around, you know. I didn't um, know we were going to get rider, serenaded today. This is a bonus. You know what's funny? <laughs> Wait a minute. No, I'm... I'm thinking to myself, I remember when I first started hunting and I was scared out of my mind. And Margaret, Glenn, do you remember yep, Margaret? Yeah, yep. Little Margaret? Well, she was pretty new to this whole thing too. And, and it, it can get a little scary out there. And we just kept singing that little song from uh, 
Nemo from Finding Nemo. Just keep trotting. Just keep trotting. Just keep trotting. <laughs> you know, just keep trotting. And somebody's horse behind us was having a complete meltdown, you know, and we're coming up on some kind of ravine. That would have been the one my wife was riding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we would just, you know, just keep trotting, just keep trotting. And it lightened it up. It made us laugh. And we just kept trotting. So, you know, I, geez, I forgot all about that until we brought this up. You, you, you see, you've hit on something. You've hit on two things. It made you laugh. You know, and I've always said, you know, when identifying your song, come up with a song that'll make you giggle a little tiny bit. You know, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, I like I like a, a lot of these, you know, these new songs. For example, I think my go-to song these days is it's a uh, um, it's the Black Eyed Peas. I got a feeling it's like today is gonna be a good good day. Oh, that's a good mind. one. You know what? It's got good rhythm, tempo. It. You know, when you're in a bad mood and you look, you hear your favorite song and it makes you feel better. That's what yeah. we're looking for. You're looking for, you know, so, so here's the other point. You already knew the technique. You already knew that singing made you feel kind of funny and silly, but it kept you focused. It kept you in the rhythm. You already knew that you had a silly little sports psychology tool in your box. You just, you just kind of lost the key to it. That's a huge one. You know, and, and another one I encourage writers to, to do is it's, it's something called memory motivation. It's a form of detachment. You know, so for example, every time you get a ner- you get nervous, you remember an amazing memory from your past, and the pa- the memory is so great it kind of pumps you up in the present. You know, f- for example, I, um, uh, Glenn, I think I told you I lived for many years in Andalusia, Spain, where I, I, I coach a, a lot of U.S. riders there. Yep, yep. Um, uh, literally one of the hottest places on the face of the earth. Um, so hot that after riding, we would cool the horses down by swing, swimming them in the ocean. And what was really cool is I figured this out. If you take a big fat Andalusian far enough out into the ocean, you can actually turn him around and surf that sucker in. It's the coolest thing in the world. It's called horse surfing. All right? And this is what you do. You go out to so you can barely touch the ground. You turn around. A big wave grabs you. You grab main and you fly in. You know? Now, if I've been flying for 36 hours and crossed nine time zones and taught you know, in 10 cities and 11 different days, and I'm tired and I need to find motivation. You know what I do? I just, I just, I remember that memory. I just close my eyes and I relive that memory because, you know, as the, as the title describes memory motivation, the memory from the past motivates me in the present. Now, we all have the memory, you know, you know, so you have the memory is there but mm. sometimes we get so focused on the negative memories. Oh, the last time I cantered, I came off. I'm really nervous about this canter thing again now. Um, boy, what a shame. I was just getting it. Now I'm really nervous about it. That rider uses memory motivation as well, but the negative memory motivates them in a negative way. What we need to do is remember our song. Remember, you know, lyrics that make us feel great and awesome. But also remember the, the great, amazing, passionate memories from our past. So that the next time that when we're feeling emotions that aren't super cool, then we just kind of go back and go, oh, yeah, horse surfing. This is so great. Bring it on, you know. Right. Um, right. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. You, there, there's all of these little tools, and none of them require a great deal of effort. Don't have to go to school. Don't even have to read a book, you know. Um, and it's interesting. Most of us already use them. We just haven't put a name to them. You well, know, and until we put a name to them, sometimes, you know, they slip away from us. You know, like you said, you, you used to sing a song, but you forgot about it. Well, Daniel, hold, hold, if you can, hold on one second. We have a commercial we have to do here, and we'll be right back. There's something I want to share with you that I think was one of the coolest things that I've heard on the Horse Radio Network in all 750 episodes. And I actually have it queued up. I want to play it for you and get your opinion on it. I'd love to hear it. <laughs> We've been speaking a whole lot in recent weeks about looking to equestrian collections for all of your fall and winter needs. They have all the top brands in winter wear for you and your horse. Well, in addition to winter, believe it or not, it is now November and time to start thinking about holiday gift giving. There's no better place to find those equestrian gift ideas than at Equestrian Collections. They have thousands of choices for all of your gift giving needs at some fantastic prices. Whether it is for that guy, girl, or equine in your life, you will find it all at EquestrianCollections.com. Get that holiday shopping started early at EquestrianCollections.com. Well, Daniel, you know, we've talked about the World Equestrian Games. You were there. I was there. And somebody else was there. Uh, you'll know her by the name of Max Cochran. She is the groom for Karen O'Connor. And Max is, uh, helps out on the eventing radio show. She co-hosts over there on occasion. And I don't. do you know her personally? 
not personally. I sure know of her. She, yeah. her, her reputation precedes her, and and you know, uh, 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 Karen deserves the best, and she has found the best in Max. Yeah, she definitely has. Max has to be one of the best grooms out there, and she's very insightful and very intelligent. And she said something. I'm going to play it now for you guys. Um, that I thought was quite profound. And it really hit me. I I listened to it a couple of times, and I think it relates to what we're talking about here. And it also relates to everything in our lives. You know, we we all have highs and lows in our life, and they come and go on a regular basis like a roller coaster. And I just thought this was interesting. So take a listen. I'll see if I can make it work. Oh, my goodness. Well, there's so much you come out of these competitions and stuff, and there's so much you can sort of reflect on. And you know, they, this is something that Karen and David have always said, and they say, you know, I mean, there's a bunch of things. One thing that they've always said to me is don't let the highs get too high because the lows will get so very low. Um, and, then- and right there it was, you know, and she... Repeat it for me. Yep. Repeat she, it for she me. She said, don't let the highs get too high because the lows will get way too low. I see. And I thought about that, and then she went on, and everybody can hear that on the Eventing Radio Show, number 102 at eventingradio.com. She went on to talk about that, and I also put it over on Horse Tip Daily, because isn't that a a statement of a lifetime right there? Boy, what what a great way to put it. In fact, it is a statement of a lifetime, because the statement in itself... Basically, what it, you know, if I understand correctly, what the statement is saying is that, you know, every day in itself can be a great day. Uh, um, uh, however, this is not the last in in, in 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 your riding career. So, so you know, sometimes we're a little bit afraid that you know, after a massive high, you know, there's a little bit of the what, what do they call it? Do they call it the honeymoon, the wedding night. What do they call? <laughs> where there's such a buildup that when it finally happens, there, there's some some sort of inevitable inevitable crash afterwards. I think the idea here is that if we can remember that as high as today was, what we're looking for is consistency. We're not, you know, we're not looking in dressage, you know, to score nines across the board. We're looking for a good, consistent, strong test every single time. The higher the highs are, you know, oftentimes the, the lows feel, you know, proportionately low. So, you know, what we've always taught is, is consistency. You know, as a matter of fact, what we've always taught is, is that the letter C is, is, is the one letter that we're going for. We're looking to be competitive and consistent. We're looking to be calm, cool, collected. We're looking to be uh, centered, creative, capable, caring, you know, <laughs> cute, whatever. <laughs> the idea is, is that if we can create consistency in our riding, develop a, a high level of consistency and maintain that throughout the years, then I think that's what leads to, you know, um, to the label of success rather than, you know, creating an amazing high today and being a one-hit wonder. You know, you never, ever come back up there. Uh, uh, That one high is great. Let's learn from it. Let's do our best to replicate that. But to understand that we're not looking for the high every time we're out there. It's impossible for a human to maintain that high. And and especially when when they're dealing with a partner that's a horse. Well... With a partner that's a horse, but just, you know, the pure athletics, you know, the, the athletic sports psychology, I, I remember hearing that Michael Phelps, after he won, you know, so many gold medals in Beijing, he did not get back into a pool for six weeks. He peaked, and, you know, periodization and peaking is a huge thing in athletics these days. We do it with all of our riders. We peak, and, but what, we're, what we also need to understand is that humans are not able to peak and stay at that high level. We work up, we peak, and then we must rest and recover. And that's what yes. Phelps does so well. He peaks, and then he steps away. Then he goes, and he rests, and he recovers. A lot of riders, if they think they just got to get up there and peak, 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 what ends up happening, the body breaks down, the mind breaks down, and then we get that crash. So we don't yeah. want the super highs because inevitably, if we hold it for too long, we get the super low. We're looking for a nice, awesome, successful middle ground that is consistency. Balance, middle ground, all things in moderation. See? I know what I'm talking about all here, Glenn. All things in moderation. <laughs> so, Dessert. We're now, talking about chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that I know about. So, we're ta- so we're, we've got all this stuff going on between our ears, which is pretty heavy stuff. But you can't deny the fact that you need the proper mechanics to help support that confidence. So you have the confidence, sometimes you lose it, you need to get it back, but that confidence can't exist with a strong foundation in mechanics. How, um, 
do you agree with that? Oh, without a question. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen seen my book. The first half of the book, um, if you're like most people, I think is probably in the back closet. <laughs> underneath the sombrero from Mexico. Um, uh, <laughs> but if you've, read, if you've read my book, the first half is on the physical development of the rider, and the second half is on the, on the sports psychology. Um, uh, I think one of the main reasons that I, that I sought the degree in, you know, in, in sports science, which is kind of like a, a physical education degree without you know, the desire to, to teach in a school setting, um, but I think the reason I, I, I saw that degree is because I saw so many riders, you know, for example, you know, really crooked, you know, they were, they were sitting on their horse crooked, but they couldn't feel it, you know, so it's interesting, one of the greatest athletic challenges that riders face is something called muscle memory, you know, just, um, you know, if, you, if, if you're a telephone operator and you talk on the phone all day with your head tilted to the right, when you eat dinner that night, your head will still t- stay tilted to the right, and you'll develop this sort of muscle memory. Unusually, when you ride, your head's tilted to the right. doesn't matter <laughs> how much I say, stick your head on straight, screw it on straight, sit up tall. The head still goes to the right because the muscle memory has developed an incorrectness. So the, the, the athletic development of the rider, it's interesting, has developed all around the principle of muscle memory. In order for us to improve ourselves, we have to be able to identify imperfections. Or a simpler way of stating stating it is, um, in order to solve something, you have to be able to see it, see to solve. Um, So what we do with with the riders is, for example, we'll put them on a balance board, you know, like this wobbly board. There's stirrups on the board. They put one foot on each stirrup. And then while they're on this really wobbly balance board, they have to pick up a sitting trot, posting trot, canter. They have to imitate the movement of changes of lead. Um, if you're in a jumping discipline, you have to jump up and down on the board, testing so the, to see that you land with the same amount of weight in each stirrup. All of these exercises, you know, the muscles are burning. You're getting a workout. Your heart rate's going. You're breathing heavy but you're actually mimicking riding. And the purpose of that is so that we can identify. Do you have stiffness in one hip? Do you land in one stirrup? Do you give more leg aid on one side than on the other? Um, And all of these exercises are done in front of a mirror because, yes, we want to develop the stamina, uh, uh, you know, and and, and core strength, for example, which a lot of people agree is equestrian fitness. But something that that gets missed with the equestrian fitness or cross training program are things like symmetry, uh, independent use of the aids, um, uh, 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 suppleness, uh, breathing, posture. All of these things create the great you know equestrian athlete as well. So we actually have our riders do what basically equate to mini squats, standing on a balance board as they're imitating the position of the sitting trot. They do this in front of the mirror so they can see if their head's tilted to one side or they can see if their hips move more to the left than to the right. In front of a mirror, you can see you, you pinch naturally with your right dominant stre- uh, strong knee. Um, you can see that because you go to school every day with your backpack over your left shoulder, that when you're in front of the mirror, naturally, your left shoulder is elevated slightly. The do you ever have anyone who's is- afraid to... Do you have ever have anyone who's afraid to look in the mirror because they're afraid of what they might see? <laughs> That's me. I was just going to say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, all these little problems, you know, and my horse you won't bend to the do? left. Yeah, but you, I know you, 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 do, you get one of those, uh, get a black bar and put it over your eyes, so, you know, like in the back of a magazine, you know, so that you don't have to see yourself. <laughs> Uh, I suppose, I suppose, but I, I really do believe in the principle. In order to solve something, you got to see it. Um, yeah. I do a lot of videotape analysis, frame by frame analysis of riders, um, and, I, and I, I guess a lot of riders are shocked. They're like, "I didn't know my leg swung at the canter. Uh, I, I can't feel it. You know, I, I didn't know it." Then when we see it in the videotape, it becomes so clear. Then we talk about what's causing it. Now the riders have a really a true desire to overcome it because they've seen it. Um, and they understand it. So it goes back to this. In order to solve something, you have to see it. You know, picture paints a thousand words. That's that old do you ha- But do, uh, you, do you see then that the learning curve, once they see it, does the, are, are they able to get unstuck uh, with more success uh, than if they're just plugging away at it? Absolutely. Absolutely. For example, I can yell at a rider, and, and I do a lot of work on symmetry. I'll stand behind a rider as they sit trot up center line. I'll sit beside them, and I'll see the most amazingly crooked rider, and I'll say, now shift your hips to the right, elevate your left shoulder, grow up tall, sit up straight. All right? I'll say that. 
And you can just see them once because crookedness feels right. Crookedness is the muscle memory. I change that muscle memory. Now I can see a rider who looks straight, but their whole body is like, are you kidding me? This can't be right. This feels horrible. So then when I'm done the lesson, the rider trots away. And they go, they go back to crooked because the muscle memory is stronger than both the horse and the, and, and, and the horse rider and instructor. So the point is we take people off of their horses and we make them imitate the movement of pride and trap horse and trap canter lead changes. But we do it in front of a mirror so they could see what their own natural imperfections are. The rider is not a crooked rider. The rider is a crooked human. You know what I'm saying? We're crooked because we're right or left hand, because we have, you know, injuries on, some, you know, old injuries on one part of our body or behavior patterns like carrying a backpack over one shoulder or, you know, I have a four-year-old daughter. I have to throw my hip now. You know, i got to throw that hip way out to the right to mm. support her. We're imperfect humans, and that leads to imperfect riders. In order for us to overcome our imperfections, though, we got to see them. So in answer to your question, if we take a rider off a horse and put them in front of a mirror and help them to see their imperfections, they are immediately, um, they have an immediate desire to want to change it because they can see it. They can go, well, that can't be right. I can't believe I'm doing this. So they have an, an immediate increased desire to want to overcome it. Um, uh, uh, and then I would say, uh, uh, I'd say that we've been shocked how quickly riders um, uh, overcome imperfections from symmetry uh, to crookedness, to stiffness, um, they all seem to go away so quickly once the rider identifies the imperfection and it's helped to understand, you know, the exercises that are required to overcome it. But r- really fast, uh, 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 shockingly fast, we can improve uh, a rider's position, not by improving them on their horse, but by improving them off of their horse. Create a straight human and you create a straight rider. Well, Daniel, uh, we are playing running out of time here, and I wish we weren't because th- th- this is so fascinating and we could talk to you all day. But you are going to be at the, you're going to be over at the um, Equine Affair, and I assume this is the kind of thing you're going to be doing over there. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to be doing the equestrian fitness uh, workshop, and then I will be doing an equestrian sports psychology seminar, and then I'm going to do a series of what are called psycho clinics. <laughs> and I love the na- I love the name of <laughs> sign Helena up They're mounted clinics. Oh, st- you know, you're on your horse, <laughs> but I- instead of me teaching you how to improve your leg or your seat, I'm going to teach you how to improve your mental focus. So a psycho clinic is where I'll take a group of riders and I will throw a ton of pressure at them. I'll rush them. I'll distract them. I'll make them lose their focus. And as a result, we're going to see what happens to their performance. We're going to take four great riders, and I bet you I can take some of their greatness away by by increasing the pressure on them. Ideally, the, the psycho clinic in the beginning, the rider starts well. As the pressure goes up, they start to suffer. Then they learn to overcome the pressure. I'm going to teach some techniques to overcome the pressure and to cope. And then by the end of the clinic, they can do a, 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 an, a, an incredibly difficult clinic. However, they have now learned the value of staying in the zone. I, huh. No matter what I that do, that sounds I don't really neat. That does sound neat. That be that oh, would be that so fun. interesting to watch. I gotta get in. Yeah. I gotta get in on those. That's. That you would be gotta perfect. come watch. They're the funniest things you've ever seen. You just can't even believe what happened. <laughs> They're the coolest clinics we've ever, ever seen. You gotta come watch them. They're a kick in what? the hand. They're the funniest things you've ever seen. What a fun way to learn. What a fun way to learn. And and yeah, okay. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> All right. And and also, Daniel, your book is still available. It's called Ride Right, and your website is riderightnow.com. And I guess uh, you said that it's getting an overhaul here soon too. So, but it's there. Um, yeah, and there's a lot of good information on there as well. So I encourage people to stop by and we'll put links in our show notes at stablescoop.com for it. Thank Some you. Great articles uh, on the website right now too. So yeah, even though it's under, oh, even though it's great. going through an overhaul, it's, there's some really good reading. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, you we know, appreciate and, and, you being here. And, and, hey, it was great talking to you. Thank you so much for including me. And, uh, and I can't wait to spend more time with you in the future. So again, another, uh, clinician that I'm really looking for. Another reason I'm looking forward to going to Equine Affair. I, you know, and this happens with every every time we have a guest on the show. I want to have them out to Rhode Island to I do know. a clinic. <laughs> <laughs> you could do a dozen clinics a year. But this guy, I really want to try that um, that 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 uh, clinic where you're put yes. under pressure. Isn't that I, something? Like, I'm drooling over that. That sounds like such a great uh, learning tool, a great learning environment. Um, because really, that's what most of us, that's when we, we melt is when we're put under serious pressure. So what what greater lesson to have than how to get yourself out from under that pressure and keep going? You know, <laughs> that's my duck. 
<laughs> well, I can't wait to hear from you in a couple of weeks. We're you're gonna have we're gonna have to talk about your adventure at uh, Equine Affair, and okay. uh, you know what you saw and, and what you found. You're, we're gonna have to we're definitely gonna have to talk about that. I'll bring my camera too. I always forget to bring my camera. I know you got to bring your camera this time, and especially get pictures with you and all these important people that are good friend of ours. Okay. I mean, look at all the clinicians or people we've had on the shows. You're gonna have to get your picture taken with a few of them, so we can put them I on know, Facebook. I see- Wait, and you know, he was right, too. Daniel was right. He's like, my, my one or two road trips a year, I don't really get out of Rhode Island much. That's but, true. That is true. See? But uh, if, if I get out there, this is my chance to meet all our wonderful guests. Yes, definitely. Friends don't, of the Horse Radio Network. Don't be afraid Network. to walk up and say hi, because every time I go somewhere and every time I do all of these events, they're always saying, where's Helena? I'm going to be Helena. So you make sure you go up and you, you tap on the shoulder of Julie Goodnight, Monty Roberts, and all those guys. Well, it's going to be hard for me. That's a really hard thing for me to do. I, I have a very hard time just walking up to somebody and saying, hi, I'm well, Alina. <laughs> you need to do it because they're all wanting to meet you. So okay, that's okay. also they're hard for you to accept, the... too. You know, this celebrity stuff doesn't come easy to you. I just because I'm, I'm a fool, you know, <laughs> deep down inside. <laughs> yeah, but I just we're feel both like fools. And people listen anyway. So, <laughs> all right, so that's a good thing. I'll try. All right. I will do my best. And speaking of coming up, we have a great couple of weeks ahead of us, too. We have uh, coming up in the next couple of weeks, we have our Ask the Vet segment with Dr. Parrott back, right? Yes, another one of my favorites. Yeah, we haven't had him back in a while, so that we're looking forward to that. Plus, it's that time of year when we have Equestrian Collections on with the holiday edition of the Stable Scoop Show, where they come on and talk about their top 10 picks for holiday gifts for the year. And that'll be up in the next couple of weeks, too. So we, we have a lot of fun stuff planned. Yeah, it is. It's you know the the time between October, between Halloween and Christmas is we always have really good shows. Yes, always lots to be excited about. We have to have the the hot chocolate, the wine, the cookies. That's, That's right. when we do our shows with all the goodies around. <laughs> That's true, and I'm really hungry for some chocolate chip cookies now that I've been talking about them. Well, I've been munching on Halloween candy pre Halloween. Oh, see, so, you broke into the Halloween candy. I wasn't allowed. I already got I already got the party started. <laughs> I wasn't allowed. What were you having? Chocolate. I had Tootsie Rolls, Whoppers, and Dots. Oh, my God. You were, you were digging in. Is there oh, any left I'm for awful. the kids? Um, no, I have to go back and get more. <laughs> I broke in like three days ago. They lasted three days into it. I, I, so I just you would yell at your daughter for doing that. <clears throat> no, I wouldn't. I would let her do that because I, <laughs> I you do, do it, it And you would feel I, less guilty then. You know, and in, in years past, I used to buy the candy and then put it in the freezer, thinking I wouldn't eat it because it's frozen. <laughs> yeah, no, that didn't work. <laughs> so this time I bought candy I didn't like. You know, I'm not really a big Tootsie Roll fan or Dots fan. Well, you know, if you get that one sugar craving, you're That's like, right. let me add it. Yeah, those Dots, you're they're... eating mostly paper. But, um, but... no, no, no. The, the, um, they're like, uh. They're, they're, they're the squishy gel oh, type. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like those things. Jujube You're picking them out of, of your thing. teeth for about three weeks. But exactly. I do like those things. Yeah, boy. Yeah. And the cherry ones especially. Oh, the fish. Mm-hmm. Do you remember the fish you used to get when you were kids? Right. They're like Swedish fish, but yeah. they're like, like thimble shaped. Did you guys you ever know? used to buy the dots that were on the paper and you ripped them off the paper and ate half the paper to eat the dots? Uh, you would eat the, but yes, and I forget what they were called, but they I would come too. in long strips of like yes. accounting tape or yes, whatever. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you'd eat paper because you were a kid, and it was worth it to get the sugar. And That's that, right. And, <laughs> and the little tubes of sugar, they were pixie sticks. Oh, yes, 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 you're right. That was just colored sugar That's in a right. tube. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but it was so good. I, so it still is. I See, I'm a punk. I've never outgrown it. I'm, I'm a 42-year-old <laughs> kid. Um, All right. Well, we better wrap up the show. Um be sure to tune in also on Monday as it's the first episode. i got to tell you this quick. It's the first episode of Horses in the Morning starting at 9 a.m. And we can just announce today that we have over $2,000 worth of giveaway items that we're going to give away to callers in the first month. And Ooh. we have two big awards or two big prizes, a $500 holiday shopping spree from Equestrian Collections. No way. Yeah, anybody that calls in the month of November is going to get entered into that. Every caller is going to get entered into that. And we're also giving away to a second caller a uh, thanks to thanks to uh, World Equestrian Brands, Mm -hmm. uh, the good folks over there. They have donated your choice of a Vespucci bridal. They are worth up to five hundred dollars. Oh my God! How did you score that? No, no that, just, that's Jennifer's I, work, isn't it? No, that's I've been a, working. It's Jennifer's work. You're absolutely right. She's been on the phones here, burning up the phone lines. We have we have a different giveaway for 
for a, a caller we're going to select every day of the month. Plus, we have these two grand prizes that we're going to give away at the end of the month. So that's over a thousand dollars in grand prizes. Can I make my husband call in? You can call in. I, you're allowed to call. What the heck? I, I don't no, think. No, I wouldn't do that. No, I'm not. Oh, calling have in. your good but friends I'm... call in for you then, and then just split okay. it. All right. See, you know, you know it's my. How do you company. split a bridle? <laughs> that's true. I'll make it work. I'll make it work. And For that you, bridle, I'll make it work. You have it one week. I have it the next. <laughs> <laughs> but Vespucci bridles are absolutely drop-dead gorgeous. I know. I know. They are the top line, top, top line bridles. So uh, she was very, Robin Moore from over there at World Equestrian Brands was very kind to do that. And Chris at Equestrian Collections, a $500 pre-holiday shopping spree. We adore you, Chris. How cool is that? <laughs> I mean, that's really cool. And Jamie and I are so looking forward to joining you on Monday morning. We have a lot of cool guests lined up next week. Jennifer has the whole week already booked out. So we have some fun stuff, too. I'll just tease you with a little bit of Monday morning. We just booked a guest to talk about. Have you ever what? heard of horse hockey? No. They oh actually gosh. play hockey on horses. So guess where? Canada. Yep. <laughs> so <laughs> so there we're going to have a guest on to talk to us about horse hockey on Monday morning. Too. So that it's just going to be a little bit of fun, a little bit of everything on Horses in the Morning. Just go to horsesinthemorning.com and uh, we'll start at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, 9 to 1030, Monday through Fridays live. And you can call in and chat with us. We'd love to hear from you. <laughs> I got to go to Canada. They got some cool stuff. Going I know on they have all the cool sports. They really do. They do. And, and you know, I, I think, um, did Jennifer send you the one about horse skiing? Oh, skewering. Yes. Yes. Gotta surfing go. or whatever. And where the horses pull the surfer in the ocean. Isn't that cool? Oh, in the ocean? No, yes. no, 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 no. There's one on the snow. Yeah. But there's also it's... one called horse surfing where the horses ride along the beach and, and they have these cords and they pull the surfers along in the water. No. Isn't that, that cool, would... too? Wow. Yeah, there's always wow. cool stuff in the world that we don't know about. We have to, we uh, have to do more shows. The things you could do on the back of a horse are limitless. <laughs> okay, we said we were going to end this thing about a half an hour ago. You can find uh, us on Twitter at Horse Radio and Helena at Helena underscore B-E-E. -E. And don't forget all our show notes with all the links to today's show stuff will be at StableScoop.com. I think that's it, Helena. That's a lot. <laughs> and, yeah. and there'll be more it's about next all. week. Let's wrap right? it up. That was good. Be, oh, wait, 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 wait. That's, this, this could be our new wrap. You say, that's about it. And I'll say, that was plenty, but there'll be more next week. That's pretty good, huh? Okay. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay. So what was my line again? All right. Yours is, um, well, that's about it. All right. Well, that's about it, Helena. And that was plenty, but there'll be more next week. That's pretty good. That was awesome. I like it. Yeah, you came up with that. Well, see, Halloween candy gets the brain going. <laughs> Go have some more uh, Tootsie Rolls. <laughs> All right. I'll talk to you on Tuesday.